Dad? Mm hmm? What's this dish made of? It's stainless steel. Where does it come from? From Tornio, son. Its story begins underground, billions of years ago. You have to add chrome to steel to create stainless steel. And the Otokumpu Kemi mine is the only place in the EU where you can find chromite ore. They cut tunnels into a seam of ore and use explosives to bring it down. The ore is then crushed at the bottom of the mine and brought to the surface through a shaft 600 meters deep. At the surface, the chromite ore is then crushed again and processed into lumpy ore and fine concentrate. And then transported to the Otokumpu Tornia site by trucks. Is it far? No, only about 25 kilometers away. At the ferrochrome works in Tornio, the fine concentrate, coke and other materials, is formed into pellets and then mixed with the lumpy ore and other raw materials in the ferrochrome smelter where they produce molten ferrochrome. When it's at the right temperature, it is poured into ladles. At the surface of the liquid floats a byproduct called slag, which is skimmed off, allowed to cool down and then crushed. What happens to it then? It's used for building roads as a sustainable alternative to gravel. The molten ferrochrome is then transported to the steel melting shop and it's ready to be used to make stainless steel. Using molten ferrochrome like this, Otokumpu saves a lot of energy and increases production capacity. Recycled steel makes up most of the raw material used by Otokumpu to make stainless steel. The recycled steel is melted in an electric arc furnace with the other raw materials. How can you melt steel? It must be really hot. Yes. It's over 1,600 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the magma in a volcano. Wow. The melted steel is mixed with the molten ferrochrome. The alloying is made to create the grade of stainless steel specified by the customer. Final adjustments to the melt are made at the ladle treatment phase. The molten steel is then transferred to a continuous casting machine where the steel is cast and cut into slabs of stainless steel about 14 meters long and weighing up to 26 tons. Each slab is marked with its own code number to identify the order and the customer. The slabs are then moved to the hot rolling mill while they are still hot to save energy. There they are heated back up to 1,200 degrees Celsius and are rolled to reduce their thickness. Their width stays the same, but they get longer and thinner until they become long strips of stainless steel. When the strips are thin enough, they are coiled and cooled, ready for cold roll. The cold rolling plant operates in two buildings at the Tornio site. One is over a kilometer long. Wow, that's a long building. Yes. It's the longest building in Finland. The coils that come from the hot rolling mill are covered in black scale. In the cold rolling plant, stainless steel is uncoiled and passed through an annealing and pickling line. This removes the scale and changes the steel surface from dull black to silver gray. What's annealing and pickling? Annealing is where the stainless steel is heated to improve its formability. And pickling involves treating the steel with acid to remove the scale. The steel band is then rolled to the desired thickness required by the customer and is then annealed and pickled again and rinsed with water. After this, the stainless steel goes through a finishing line and the products are then slightly shiny and flat. The stainless steel is then taken to be cut to the size required by the customer, either as coils or as sheets. The stainless steel sheets and coils are then packed and loaded on trucks, trains and ships. In Tornio, Otokumpu operates a port where the raw materials arrive and the finished products are ready to be sent to customers around the world, including the company who made you dish. Dad. What? I'd like to see the steel plant at Tornio one day. Well, perhaps you will, son.
Now eat your stew. Dad? Mm-hmm? It's gone cold. <laughs>